old high school quarterback, you know, who still lives the glory days, you know, and they parade the lineup, you know, with that same kind of entitled attitude, you know, it's, um, and I'm sure people who see me think that or whatever, you know, or, you know, but, but it's, it, it is like, yeah, the, 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 the arrested developed surfers are the ones that I feel like, you know, are, are, are real frustrating to surf with. For sure, the ones yeah. who who still frustrating, frustrating to be that dude. Yeah, because you're not, you're not, you're you're holding on to something that you can't hold on to because your body's different, your mind's different, everything's different. So to think you're going to surf like you did when you're 20 at 40, yeah. 45, that's crazy. And honestly, you, you enjoy yourself more. I think if you just yielded to what's happening naturally well, you know so much of surf, surfing is happening in nature you know like yeah. if anything surfing puts it into perspective that we're part you know not that we're separate you know that's like the human construct that we're somehow separate from nature we're absolutely part and parcel of nature we are part you except know, for the surfing, american dream mall wave pool but that's a whole yeah, other. Yeah. just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Pool. yeah like, still physics and got a couple waves i'd have fun <laughs> you know and if i was a kid i'd be psyched on that wave pool and Dude, I'm not as a grown-up i can tell you'd be stoked on it <laughs> it's still yeah. awesome you know but it's definitely different you know think of dudes that are going to go up surfing in a wave pool it's, that experience I, compared to like that's not even really surfing to me like in I, the sense of like you're not surfing. But, but that's like, to me, it's like um, river surfing or wake surfing. It's a offshoot of, of surfing that, you know, you can cross over into the ocean surfing probably a little easier yeah. than others. And I don't know. I, I, lo- I like the idea of a lot of people learning to surf in wave pools for sure. Like getting certain foundational yeah. things um, in a controlled environment might be kind of nice, but um but it is interesting the people who get older right and who yeah you know you particularly you see the older surfers who are you know our age and uh trying to do the maneuvers the younger maneuvers and pushing their bodies doing things that maybe you know they can't do and they don't look as good in some ways uh it reminds me of this story i read in this book uh zen in the martial arts like this guy joe hyams and it's, i thought it'd be kind of nice have- to you, yeah, I was gonna see because you know your dad was in martial arts, and you've you re, you're mentioning you read a lot about this stuff. So I thought you might be really into it. So I love the story about how he's trying to do these high kicks still, and it takes him forever to do them, and he's not doing them well, and you know he's losing in the fight or his you know his matches. And his sensei is like, you know, you need to. You're older. You can do those things. You have to accept the limitations. So what you should do is do the things that you can do, learn to do them very well and efficiently. And that will be, and that's why I feel like with surfing, as we get older, you know, we can't do airs, we can't do other things. So we do the things like you said, cut the fat out of the surfing and make it smoother, make it more connected, make it more artistry, maybe. And, um, you know, take pride in, in the reading and judgment of the wave instead of the, the maneuver that you do to the wave. Absolutely, yeah, and it sort of slows the experience down. Yeah, that makes you know. When I was young, it was all happening like, like bam, 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 bam. You know, like now we're like, I feel like my mind has slowed down a bit, and you know, every I feel everything a bit more. Yeah. Now, for me, it all starts, you know, you know, paddling, you know, dropping in, but the bottom turn, like that's. You know, just the fundamentals, like just the, you, I, the bottom turn alone, mm-hmm. I could talk about that or just <sighs> focus on that for, you know, forever. It's like your yeah. starting point, your drop, you know, once you're, you've made the drop, you know, that turn is so important to where you're going to go, you know, but now what I do compared to what I did, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, if I come off the bottom, you know, I'd want to go straight up and crack it. 
yeah. now, not all, not all the time, you know, and not trying to force things where I would when I was younger, like trying to like stack these turns into where they didn't even really make sense. Yeah. You know, you learned how to do it. You grew up doing it and you did the contest and you learned how to stick turns maybe where they didn't belong or whatever. But now I just really want to bend more to what the wave is is offering me and just take that as like the cue. Okay, like this is what what's gonna happen, you know? As opposed to like always feeling like I have to do this like and surf like a machine. Yeah. It's like a machine, I'm like off the bottom, off the, off the bottom, off the, you know, there was this whole way of, of doing it where, like, now I feel more free to not do that if I don't want. I don't have to do that. You know, I can do this, this other thing. I could come off the bottom and kind of take a longer trajectory and do just a high line and not track it and come out of that high line and do it a different turn somewhere else on the wave. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so many different options. It just feels good to not surf like a robot, you know, and have the, the, the variety of equipment that lends itself to a little more diversity in what you're doing. And, and, and it's spontaneous, but in a different way. It's more like, it's, I use the word artful, but, you know, it's... I would call it more of a dance, like, maybe. Or maybe... When you're younger, you're just leading that dance. And as you get older, yeah. you're like, you're letting, you're learning to let the wave lead. Definitely. Yeah. It's a, it's more of a, it's a dance. It's a, it's a back and forth between the, the two, you know, that there's two, you know, there's two energies. There's my energy and then there's the waves energy. And instead of me just, you know, like, oh, like, let me bash this wave the way I want to. Like, yeah brutalize no let me now like learn to flow with this wave let me and it, and it helps us i think it, that kind of surfing even helps us outside of the water maybe in our relationships and yes. work and the way that we approach life to learn to not be so rigid and to be able to bend and to be able to compromise and and, and to be able to move more gracefully you know, when, when we bring it out of the water, that's when it really has, like, that real value. Like, surfing in and of itself, to me, is valuable. Play, you know, to play, yeah. to have fun, and to enjoy like that in a, in a real pure way has a value. But I also think there's a value that we take onto land, that the way we, you know, might parent our child or the way that we interact with our significant other or our friends, you know, all these different things. And it's been a hard road for me, like to not be like a control, you know, we're raised in a culture that you want to manipulate, you want to control, you need to, you know, and you're bashed with that in your head and you're like, ah, and then, you know, it, it doesn't work, you know, mm -hmm. that, that lifestyle, that mentality, it doesn't work. And I, and I feel like, you know, through the surfing and through the changing and, you know, you know, all these different things, we start to realize that letting go and sometimes yielding to what is, is, is the wiser path, as opposed to always trying to, you know, put our impression on it or our, our need to control. Well, the surfing, I feel like surfing is, you know, the teacher and it's like there are lessons there and metaphors that you can pull from surfing to apply to life. And it's, you know, it's just phys applying the physics to your, to your life in many ways. I always love finding the parables of, of surfing in, in life and, and applying, trying to apply that philosophy or how, how you handle situations in water and how you handle it in real life. It would be, yeah, that's, that's the ideal, I think, for me at least, to, to be as for surfing is to be able to learn from it and apply it to the real world. Um, Definitely. So I'm going to finish up the last question here. All right. Uh, Shaud. So last question, if you had one surfboard to surf for the rest of your life, what board would that be? And it can be a board from your past now or something you would order. For the rest of my life. Yeah. 
and you have to be able to surf it in every condition. Well, uh, well, I've been I've been riding all the boards I have right now are twin fins. Yeah, every board I have is a twin fin. My smallest <laughs> board now is a six, six nine. That's oh. my <laughs> wow! It, it, doesn't, it doesn't ride like a six nine. Like a lot of the waves that I have in that film are on that board. Yeah. And when I check people, it's a six nine. They're like, "How does it turn like that?" Or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, so you know, I've been getting boards from Matt Parker from albums for o- over five years now. God, so you're you're the, you the head of the cur- the curve, you know. He's just blown I, up I, so I, much since then. Yeah, and I got lucky because now he's got all these huge names and <laughs> amazing guys running boards. I probably wouldn't be getting any boards if, if it was now, but I got lucky. I got in early, and you know, like the old guy. But we kind of went through so many different boards, and he's really great to work with, and he was always very humble with me and very kind and very willing to work with me. You know, I had run through so many boards. I remember I was in a big mini Simmons phase for a while. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, that's addictive. Diff- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's a great time. And I, but I felt like, okay, like for me, you know, you never really master anything, but I said, you know, for me, my level of surfing, I feel like I've kind of mastered this board. What am I going to go to next? So then we started experimenting with the twin fins. And uh, so basically the 6.9 is, is like my shortboard now. What would be my shortboard? And then I have a 7.2, the different twin fin, then I have an 8.0. Anyway, but if I had to have one board, it would have to be somewhere in a 7-foot range, a twin fin to ride mm-hmm. in everything. Because these bigger twin fins I can ride you know, here and, you know, any type of bigger surf, hollow surf that we get. They, now, when you say great. twin fin, are you, these are not proper twin fins, not, not uh, keel fins, right? Like you're not riding keels. You're, you're riding like well, kind of big MR yeah. type fins. Yeah. And more stand up twins. So I have a six, right. nine, that's an asymmetrical twin, a little oh, offset sick. and it's a, a pin, pin tail. That's the board I'm riding mostly in the film. And then I have a, a 7.2. It's a little beefier. It's got glass on to it, but actually a little wider nice. swallow. I haven't really got to put that, you know, board to, through it yet. I've, I've only ridden it. It's a new board. I've only ridden it once. And uh, I have an 8 that's, like, it's big. It's a beefy board. It's three inches thick. It's, like, kind of like my lob because I'm not, like, a long board surfer. Yeah. Um, um, just the way I ride bigger boards, I realized like I'm not a longboarder. You know, I have friends that longboard well, and I'm like, I ride it a little different. Let me get something that makes sense for me. So this yeah. is a big, like a mega, essentially. He calls it the whale shark. You know, and that has keels. But I feel like I'd ride something if it was like I can only have one board in the seven foot range, twin fin. Um, so I could ride it. Any, you know, small stuff, big stuff. You'd be surprised. Like, I never thought twin fins would work the way they do in big or hollow surf. Well, your mind got all manipulated from North Shore, you know, and Aki just ruining <laughs> it for you. Was saying, twin fin? Nobody rides those in Hawaii anymore. <laughs> and that was really the mentality, though, coming in in the mid-'80s. Like, you couldn't have anything but a thruster. No. Or you were total goofball. And, uh... It's, it's wild. And then, you know, then t- 20s were coming back, but they were always like wide tail fishes. And then to think like, oh, I'm going to be riding the twin fin in tubes. And if the twin fin is the first wave, you know, I'm a taller guy. I'm 6'3". So usually when I'm tubes, I got to just yeah, try to we do my squeeze. And not... <laughs> yeah, but this twin fin is the first board that I can like actually like weave a bit. Wow. In the tube. I've never been able to, you know, kind of maneuver a board even slightly in the tube is just kind of stall and hang there. I mean, not like I'm surfing yeah. crazy huge or anything, but you know, here, you know, eight, eight foot, 10 foot, the big game, you know, and uh, it, 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 it's great. Like for me, the, the boards I have now are the best boards I've had in the last decade and serve me the best for the way I'm surfing. It, it, these longer rail twins, you know, and I guess 
it's getting like, on some level trendy.